so definitely two years ago, I think it was about two years ago, I did, did the video now. It was about 2018, 2017, I think it must have been. I did a, a video saying that there would be what we would call the great grey returning wave. And this was in reference to essentially the hundreds, if not hundreds, yeah, hundreds, because that's how much it is, hundreds of millions of British, quote, expats or immigrants, really, let's give them the proper name, um, when they used to use the European Union's freedom of movement rules to go essentially live out their um, their twilight years in, you know, the sunny Costa del Sol or the Canary Islands or, you know, Tenerife. You know, this was what many middle class people in this country, would, that, was, that was their aim. When they got to that age, they would leave you know, the UK to go and retire abroad. This was pretty much the, the modus operandi for hundreds of thousands of, of people and the dream of many people. But of course, now with Brexit in play, that is not the case. And once again, we have to go back to the Leave campaign because, as we've said before, for the Leave campaign to actually win, it had to try and attract the broadest coalition of people it could. And really, when you look at the Leave campaign now, all its promises that it promised people of staying in the single market and staying in the customs union, because again, that now infamous quote, only a fool would leave the single markets. Yeah, and we were warning of this constantly throughout all this time of, no, you don't understand what you're voting for, to which they turn, would turn around and say, no, we know exactly what we were voting for. And as some of you are very well aware, we have had very much recently the, the start of this return wave of people re being forced back into the UK because we are now a third country, no longer part of the EU single market customs union and even the rules of freedom of movement that allowed people to go and live, work, and so on and so forth in the EU, which was, again, promised by the Leave campaign that this would still be possible. <laughs> and once again, these people tell us they knew what they were voting for, apparently. So, Please do remember to hit the like and share button. And of course, down below, there is a link to my Patreon page as well as a one of donation link called Buy Me a Coffee, where you can, well, buy me a coffee. And thank you to all those people who do support me that way. And now on to the article, because I think this hits right on the head. Because do not expect the past couple of headlines that we've seen for the past really couple of days. They will continue about former you know, Brits abroad in that live live and work in the EU being forced to come back. We haven't seen the end of these headlines. Trust me, I think they will be around for at least the next couple of weeks to come. So, this comes from The Independent, and the title is A Message to the Brits Forced to Return Home from Spain. This is the Brexit you voted for. In the midst of what seems increasingly akin to a burgeoning Cold War between the UK and the EU, one attention-grabbing story has been hitting the headlines. Reports of hundreds of Britons fleeing Spain to avoid deportation. As the account goes, around 500 British uh, migrants living in Spain have supposedly left the country for fear of being, quote, booted out. Some uh, saying within a matter of days. My application has been rejected and we are on our way home. My wife is in tears, said Costa, said, said uh, Costa, uh, Costa berated Brit's son, Son, son Crum Crumber, who admitted to voting leave without realising it would come to this. A closer look, however, reveals a rather different picture. 
own and one that would place the matter squarely in Britain's hands. To begin with, any Briton who lawfully settled in Spain prior to Brexit uh, de uh, deadline at the end of last year has their right to stay covered by the withdrawal agreement. Unlike in the UK, where EU nationals have been made uh, to apply through the settled status scheme, Britons residing in Spain merely needed to register through self-declaration, an even simpler process than what is in place in Britain. On the other hand, Britons who have, uh, who have uh, come to Spain from the start of the year will only be allowed to stay visa-free for 90 days within the 180-day period, like any other Schengen states, such as any of those who found themselves fearing for their future are individuals who did not make meet, who did not make the deadline, or even longer term re, re, or even longer term residents, who have been unwilling to declare residency. Both the Brits and the Spanish governments have insisted that they have no plans to forcibly deport any Briton living in the country. Commenting on the story, Sue Wilson, the chair of Remain in Spain the activist group of UK nationals living uh, in the country noted that, quote, overstayers should be aware that they are no longer EU citizens and will be treated as third country nationals. These rules are not new. This, uh, and the Spanish or any other EU government are not to blame for the position we've been put in. Her thoughts were echoed by Debbie Williams, a, Rel a Welsh resident in Spain and fellow campaigner. While I am sympathetic to those who tried to make it, she told me, I believe that anyone who entered the country after the transition period had ended should expect to abide by the Spanish immigration rules. It's always been clear what ending freedom of movement would mean. Once you strip away the drama and the incendiary language from these reports, you're left with nothing more than a tale of Brexit boomerang coming back to hit us on the head. But at the same time, the story also illustrates a wider, deeper point, namely just how much we've lost by giving up freedom of movement. The right to free movement between the EU states has been routinely pillaged by the Brexiteers since and before the Leave campaign even started. Politicians and tabloids spoke of, quote, migrant workers flooding Britain. Images of catac cataclysmic invasions and deluges. Aside from the inflammatory and even racist undertones of such rhetoric, it cruelly ignored a major part of the story. That freedom of movement is, and has been, always a two-way street. One that Britons had been benefiting from for decades. And as... Uh, and far from uh, gap years in Amsterdam, uh, from from gap years in Amsterdam to sunny retirements, uh, to sunny retirements on the Costa del Sol, freedom of movement has offered Britons an unprecedented opportunity to enrich their lives and settle easily throughout the continent. It is a little tragic how the British people were informed about the benefits of freedom of movement or there are a variety of things that they would stand to lose upon Britain's departure from the EU. One viral tweet, tweet capturing the, the surprise of a young woman's Brexit supporting parents upon discovering that they could no longer access certain Sky content in Spain provides a small but emblematic snapshot of this. But ultimately, however... It may pain many, especially those on the Remain camp. Britain, choose, Britain chose Brexit, and in 2019, this country was given a chance to vote out Boris Johnson and his hard Brexit aides. Yet, they gave him one of the biggest parliamentary majorities in recent memory. One can sit back and blame the first-past-the-post system, or look at how the 25% of the votes went to parties supporting a second Brexit referendum. But that doesn't change the facts on the ground. Johnson's vision was, and remains, if opinion polls are to go by, the preferred choice for Britain among the electorate. His victory is just much of an endorsement of Brexit as it is a collective failure of opposition parties to unite successfully against him, which 
Uh, which means that even we Remainers, in our own way, are partly responsible for the current state of affairs. If a group of Britons can no longer freely stay in Spain and feel that they have uh, to leave the country to avoid being caught up in legal entanglements, the responsibility lies on Britain and Britain alone. We cannot blame Spain or the EU for not unclogging the cage that we've built around ourselves. Mid uh, metocracy, touted as an old age British value, is founded upon the principle of giving to each what they deserve. As someone who campaigned passionately against Brexit, I am keenly aware of just how many did not ask us to go down this path. And regardless of political views, I feel sympathy for any Briton caught in this difficult situation abroad. Nevertheless, in life, we sometimes make choices we regret or have to endure those made by others against our will. It is time as a country we collectively owned up to a decision made five years ago and accept its consequences, warts and all. And here's the thing. I've said this multiple, multiple times. My whole point is against this whole thing of just how much this is going to damage us the lies that were told by the leave campaign and still being told by this incredibly hard right brexit government as if brexit is somehow this magical thing that is going to solve all britain's woes and troubles remember if you go and generally talk to people in the north who voted for brexit there is one very clear thing they voted for Brexit because they were told by the Brexiteers that doing so would make their life somehow better. That is not going to happen. And unfortunately, we are seeing this continuously on a daily basis from many businesses. And many of these businesses, ultimately, because they have lost the EU market that they now used to trade in, some of which have lost... 60 70 percent of their business literally overnight and that isn't going to rebuild and even if they do find a way to start trading with the european union it is not going to be in those levels again i would be shocked for any any company that used to have a like a 70 60 70 percent you know, market over there where their exports used to be, I would be very shocked if they go above 10% again. Especially if there was a small or medium country, a medium company. I would be very, very shocked. But that's the problem that we've put ourselves in. And one of the things that we are constantly, constantly fighting against is that when we bring these things up, we are told, oh, you're just remaining, you're just trying to overturn a vote, we knew what we were voting for, even though it was very, very clear that a lot of these people, um, these Brits in Spain who voted for Brexit and somehow expected to stay there, did not know what they were voting for. And as I've said before, one of the biggest things that the Leave campaign did to get its majority as well as you know cheat um <laughs> they essentially put out as much coverage as they could like i say they did state that voting to leave would not mean that britain would leave the single market and customs union and as i've said before if you were to get literally you picked five people who voted leave at random i guarantee you none of them none of them would have the same idea for what Brexit was because the thing about it was always was was that it was going to be this nebulous thing and that we would find out after the vote what quote what would happen but of course what happened was that the Tory party got captured by an incredibly hard right wing of the party namely the ERG and essentially they forced their will for what the Brexit they wanted, which basically represented probably about less than 1% of this entire country. Again, it does not make any sense. And again, as someone who passionately believes that this is the wrong decision for this country and that it needs to be reversed as quickly and as soon as possible, 
you know, I will still keep on campaigning that Brexit was the wrong thing to do for this country. It was a mistake and it should have never, ever been put to the British people because referendums on stuff like this are just completely and utterly ridiculous because it was boiled down to uh, essentially feelings and and stuff that weren't and did not reflect the general reality of the world that we live in today. And that is what we are going to find out all too soon. And trust me, the Conservatives and the Brexiteers themselves have had an absolute windfall in the fact of the coronavirus managing to covering up a lot of the damage that Brexit is doing. Um, like I say, a lot of companies either A, aren't operating, aren't operating, operating at full capacity or, you know, that they're not working at all. And as I've said before, as the later we get through the year, more and more companies, more and more industries are going to start saying, this is what Brexit has done to our industry. We've lost all our European trade and we ain't getting it back. And I've always said, as we, we covered just a few weeks ago, the best worst case scenario for Brexit is simply this. Less exports, smaller economy, less investment, less jobs. And I'll tell you one thing, no one on the on the on the leave side voted for that. But as we warned you, that was one of the consequences that you were voting for. You know, it's going to be very, it's go it is going to appear very, very quickly just how bad Brexit is affecting this country and just how much we actually need the European uh, Union, the Single Market and Customs Union. And I've always said that if we end up rejoining the Single Market and Customs Union, eventually we will just rejoin the EU because it does not make sense for us to be in those organisations and then not have a seat at the table. Like I said before, Brexit, strip it down to its bare bones. It just does not make any damn sense. So, as always, thank you for watching. Please do remember to hit that like and share button. And of course, down below, there is a link to my Patreon page, as well as a one-off donation link. And as always, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all next time.